Hello everyone and welcome to a spatial update in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 with Realism Overhaul. In a previous video I had explained how to install, assemble and fly the space shuttle, but we had problems with re-entry and also with small other things uh, like uh, the tail fin, the vertical stabilizer model not changing. Now there has been a different version of the same space shuttle mod, uh, originally the DECU mod and then Radar's version of the DECU mod. and there is now a Dylan Semro version of the mod, and that's on page 14 of the same thread that I'll link in the video description that was starred by Radar. And so Dylan Semro has uh, fixed a few things. And after we go down here a few. So here on uh, May 28th, uh, there is a GitHub link. We go to the GitHub link. Uh, you will need to download the zip file here. Uh, there's no official release yet. I suppose it's still a work in progress, but we're going to download this zip file. Okay, and then I have a custom space shuttle install here for it. Uh, it does not have any space shuttle in here yet, and so we double click space shuttle master, double click game data, and then space shuttle system here we want in. Now, just in case I'm not sure it's necessary, make sure you have KSP wheel. And also textures unlimited. I always have them, but and it might require them. It probably ought to. Uh, taking a look at the stuff that was bundled in the previous space shuttle system. So in the previous space shuttle system version, we had a fire spitter plugin, raster prop monitor, and KSP wheel. So maybe find the fire spitter plugin. I probably linked it in the original video and get raster prop monitor. So JSI is raster prop monitor folder. Make sure you have that and KSP wheel. And that might fix some of the problems. Another problem you're going to have is with the textures. And that's because this mod, this version of the space shuttle system fixes the textures, but realism overhaul also tried to fix the textures. So you have to go into the realism overhaul folder, go into suggested mods, go into space shuttle systems and delete this shuttle texture switch file. Otherwise, you're going to have problems there too. So we've got that. Now I'm going to discuss the fixes I did in order to make the space shuttle re-enter properly. This is a bit technical and, uh, and so you're not gonna like it. But the fact is that it's better if you know what I have done than to just take the files and not know what the heck is going on just in case you discover that maybe you want to change things again. So we're going to look into wing surfaces and we also want to take a look at the fuselage in the realism overhaul configs. Okay. Now the core of the problem is that the far aerodynamic model that we have here is it, it's just not reading the wings right and it's producing a net roll to one side. And that's because it's reading the two wings differently instead of being symmetrical, right? Because the two wings are supposed to be symmetrical, but they're, they're two different parts. Unlike normal wings in Kerbal Space Program where you put them in symmetry, these are two different wing parts. And I think that causes a problem. Same with the elevons here. So here we see that it deletes the original module lifting surface and introduces the FAR aerodynamic model. Instead of having FAR deal with the wing, and there's just an aerodynamic model for the wing. What this means is this is the um, this is the cord. I think this is the area, or I think so. And then the mid cord sweep is just the wing sweep, and taper ratio is the ratio between the cord at the root and the cord at the tip, and uh, so forth. So there's just telling it the shape of the wing. Now that's tricky because shape of the wing it's it's missing certain features of the wing. The thickness of the wing, for instance, it does not seem to play in here. So anyway, I'm going to just get rid of this. So I'm commenting it out and I'll give you a version of my configurations so you don't have to do this. And I'm also commenting out the bit where it deletes module lifting surface. Okay. And I'm going to do that for the elevons as well. And instead we're going to directly edit module lifting surface, the stock model, in order to make the shuttle fly more appropriately. Now I've done this in a different install already. I've got too many things. 
So if we take a look at wing surfaces, I've got this done here. Also, I've deleted this maximum drag here, and this section here is specific to the FAR aerodynamic model anyway, so I delete that. And um, I tried fixing the roll problem by getting rid of this rotation uh, that uh, was introduced, but that doesn't seem to do anything. But if in with my version, you find that uh, either way, the vertical stabilizer is going to be oriented weird in the SPH, so that's just going to be a thing. But yeah, uh, my I tried to fix that, and I've just let it be, the, even though the fix did not actually work out. Um, so getting rid of the drag, getting rid of the lifting surface and far aerodynamic model again. So if we take a look at the fuselage, uh, they have deleted module lifting surface, and I've left that deleted. Uh, so there's no module lifting surface on the fuselage. That might be something that you want to change. Uh, maybe you want to give it a module lifting surface. That might help. So the motivation for what we're doing is, first of all, fixing the roll problem. But then I'll discuss other problems that we're going to try and fix. So we've gotten rid of this, but we want to take a look at the original module control surface and module lifting surface to see if the numbers are good. So again, we're going to comment out in our newer version uh, the drag numbers here. And the reason it sets the drag to zero is because FAR normally handles that. And since FAR is not going to be handling that in this case, we have to comment it out. And this is irrelevant here. Now, comparing my previously tweaked version that I've tested so far, I've added a little bit here that introduces a center of lift offset. The center mass offset is zero, 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 so that's not a thing. But I moved the center of lift just a little bit, and so I'll put that into this version here. Uh, that was just, it seems to be a good thing. It's only by one meter in two directions, so it's fine-tuning it somewhat. And what you can see is I did some fine tuning on the center of mass and center of lift of the crew sec section of the fuselage. So I'm going to add those in. Okay, and I think that just moves the center of mass and center of lift down uh, because I thought they were a little bit too high on the body. And I moved it on the cargo section as well. There is already a COM offset here, so we're just going to overwrite that. And I did for the engine mount too. That's just, once again, moving the center of mass down. Okay, and so those are the only tweaks to the fuselage section. Now we're going to take a look at the... So these are the realism overall configurations for the space shuttle system. Now, because we've restored the original module lifting surface, we're going to take a look in Space Shuttle Systems, Parts, the shuttle, and take a look in particular at the body segments and the wings, but especially the wings. So first the two wings, and then the two elevons. Let's open up the body flap. Uh, the body flap probably isn't too big a deal, but let's deal with these first. The two wings, the two elevons, and the body flap. Okay, so first of all, we take a look at the minimum and maximum drag. Remember, it was zero because of realism overhaul. And we're going to set those to 0.02, which is standard for KSP. Another thing is the lift deflection ratio, the, the, the lift coefficient. The lift coefficient is 14 that I've set, and the max drag is 1.5, which is much higher than the original 0.2. So we could do this in the realism overall configuration, but since it's not a far thing, uh, we see 14 here actually, so that's fine. Uh, but we don't want um, 0.2 anymore here. We want 1.5, so it was originally 0.2. So we're giving it a lot more drag. Uh, the original numbers here are fine, so uh, that wasn't something I changed. Okay, so I'm only increasing a whole bunch of drag onto the thing. And same here, we're just going to increase a lot of drag. And the reason for that is, basically, they're 
there are three problems, right? There's the roll problem, there's a pitch problem, and a yaw problem. The pitch problem is based on where your center of mass and center of lift are, so we've tweaked that a little bit. And then there's the yaw problem. The yaw problem happens if you're going too fast at a particular velocity, because then the shuttle systems can't keep a grip. And so the air is too thin, but you're going too fast. Then the uh, if you're high up, your, your RCS just can't hold on. And if you are lower, the vertical stabilizer can't hold on if you don't have enough drag, uh, if you haven't slowed down enough by that point. So we need more drag to slow down. Even so, I've had to start to retro burn about 16 degrees ahead of time in order to hit Cape Canaveral than what I used to do in 1.3.1. So, uh, so we've done the wings. We've done the, uh, we need to do the elevons. So let's see, it's uh, just increasing the drag, I think. You could increase the lift coefficient, but I'm not touching that. So 1 is what I set the drag coefficient to there. Make sure the 0 0.02, 0 0.02, is, and 0.2 is there. And it doesn't look like I bothered with the body flap. We could increase that. Might be necessary, we'll see. But uh, we'll leave it be. Okay, so next we need to take a look at the fuselage to make sure that the fuselage produces an appropriate amount of drag. So, shuttle cabin, cargo, engine mount. Okay, uh, point 0.2 is fine. Point 0.2 is fine. Okay, so the cabin producing only point 0.01 is a problem. That's too little drag for us. I put it back to 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 2, which is sort of the standard thing for, for Kerbal. Okay, actually the cargo section needs 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 2 as well. I had the wrong file open there. Yep, 2 please. And the center of lift offset is the same. Yeah, okay, so 0 0.2, 0 0.22, which is standard stuff for Kerbal. And then the wings having 0 0.02 is pretty standard as well. So we're basically giving it very standard numbers. Engine mount should have angular drag too as well, just to be consistent. And I don't know why the shuttle cabin has only a crew capacity of 6. Maybe because of the internal seats, technically it should have... 8 is the max that the shell ever carried. I'll let you decide whether you want to change that. I'm not going to right now. Okay, so that's just a summary of what I changed. Again, I'll just link my configurations in the video description and you can overwrite, but um, in case something goes wrong, because we're doing some really dicey things here, uh, I want you to know the sorts of things that I did and so that you can change them if it's not to your liking, if maybe you feel that there's too much or too little drag, you know where to go. These are the numbers that you need to change. So, yep. All right, so with that, we are going to load it up and see how it works. Okay, well, I just wasted an hour and a half because I didn't realize that the Realism Overhaul configuration that comes with Realism Overhaul for the Space Shuttle mod does not get rid of Module Reaction Wheel. This is the one that I used for testing, but this is the one that comes with Realism Overhaul that I was just editing for you to show you how to edit it. And I didn't realize that left the Reaction Wheel that the stock part comes with, which is a super-powered Reaction Wheel. And I was going like during, uh, so I did a whole shuttle launch and re-entry thing. I recorded the whole deal and I was going, wow, it's, it's uh, working pretty darn well. It's not using a lot of RCS to hold it and stuff. And it's because it's got this really powerful reaction wheel in, but which of course would make it easier. I mean, if you want to keep it in, that's fine. Uh, it's not very realistic. The shuttle doesn't actually have a reaction wheel. So... 
I'm, I'm going to do it properly. I'm going to copy the module reaction wheel here and put it in here. Uh, this, to get rid of that reaction wheel, I'm going to edit the realism overall configuration so it gets that out. And of course, I tested it with no reaction wheel. Otherwise, boy, would I be back on the drawing board again. And it looks like there's a module reaction wheel in the cargo bay too, which is great. Um, so let's get rid of that. All these reaction wheels. Oh, that one's already gotten rid of at least. Okay. So I think the realism overhaul configuration that comes with realism overhaul thought that the reaction wheel was only in the cargo bay, but missed the fact that there was one in the crew cabin as well. Okay, so here we are, and now we don't have the reaction wheel in here. Very important to check that. And also not in the fuselage or in the engine mount or any sneaky place. We do see this uh, vertical stabilizer problem, and I'm just going to place that manually. So yeah, I haven't fixed the vertical stabilizer weirdness, but that's for later. Alright, so let me just save it like that. And let me open the cargo bay. I've got a docking system here. So that's the only cargo that we're going to be testing with. And in addition to the parts that you would get by typing in shuttle here, uh, these are, you should see all the shuttle parts. If you're missing something, remember KSP wheel, uh, raster prop monitor, and fire spitter plug-in. Make sure you have those. And in addition to the parts that come with the mod, I also have separatrons that are from KW Rocketry, these Saturn V S2 retro rockets that are on the boosters. So. That helps them separate cleanly. Otherwise, no changes, except I'm going to tell these to be active on roll because I have no idea why they wouldn't be. Let's make sure everything else, this is just yaw, that's fine. And this and it can be just pitch, that's fine too. So that's what we've got. We're pretty high off of the floor because that's how we fit the launch pad, which I will show now. Okay, so as far as installing Katniss Cape Canaveral, which is the ground textures here and some of the physical buildings, uh, you should just follow the instructions in the Katniss Cape Canaveral thread on the forums. Basically, you have to have the latest version of Real Solar System, of Copernicus, of um, Kerbal Constructs, and OSSNTR is optional. But yeah, mainly real solar system, real solar system textures, latest version, highest level of those, at least for Earth and Copernicus. And you better have a system that can run it. And then you can get that working. Now that's not including this structure that we have on the pad. This is from real launch sites. That takes a little bit more doing, so I won't describe that. Maybe at some point I'll I'll go through that whole business, but for now we're not. So throttle this down, and we're going to be going to a 51.4 degree orbit, which is the International Space Station orbit, just as our test orbit. And that is because it's marginally harder to get back from that orbit, and also it takes more to get there. But we aren't carrying a payload, so we've got plenty of margin. Obviously, the shuttle should work properly without a payload first. Once you put payloads in, and if you need to bring a payload back in particular, you may need to consider placing a lead weight. They actually did that. They had a position in front of the wheel well and uh, close to the body flap on the tail uh, in order to put lead weights to make sure that the shuttle was balanced for re-entry with the payload that they wanted to bring back. So... Yeah. Of course, simply positioning it properly in the bay can help too. We are testing with the docking port arrangement there, so there is that. Later on, I'll test with uh, other payloads and other stuff. First, the first basic goal right now is to make sure that the shuttle comes back without flipping around or destroying itself. That's goal number one, and that 
I can land or splash down. I mean, I'll take a splash down at this point, though I'd really like to land a Cape Canaveral, but the return script could do some tweaking probably. Oh, uh, this script did not turn on the fuel cells. Pressing 6 to turn on the fuel cells and the APU. The fuel cells and APU are in this part here, in the back. Okay, off go the boosters, cleanly. So, you can control them from there, and there should be plenty of margin on that, so I don't have fuel cell 3 on. The actual fuel cell fuel is here in the main fuselage, so make sure its flow priority is low compared to the external tank, otherwise it'll drain first. And you won't have any fuel cell fuel. Alright, we are in not quite orbit. We are in external tank disposal mode. Okay, and you can see 502 meters per second. With cargo, of course, it'd be less, more closer to 400 meters per second. And we haven't made orbit yet. We have to use some to finish orbit here. I can time up a little bit. Uh, right around here, I'll leave it to 10x, otherwise it's going to have a little bit of trouble turning before it burns properly. Hmm, a little bit of uh, contrariness in the RCS, that's troubling. Obviously that is wasteful. We don't want to see that. The key here is we really want all the maneuvers to be done with a minimum amount of Delta V. But since we're not carrying payload, I'll be wasting Delta V deliberately in order to proceed with the test. One thing that may be different between my install and yours is that we have persistent rotation. So that also may make it a little bit harder for KOS, I don't know. Okay. The program is concluded, we're at 160 kilometers, but that's not high enough. So for the most part, for the test, we'll be at an hour and a half to simplify things. But first I'm gonna burn some extra. I want to sort of get in, uh, start up the re-entry script with 200 meters per second. So I'm gonna go ahead and use up 240, or that's what I intend to do. And that'd be about what you need for a basic ISS rendezvous not including the docking assuming that we had cargo in the bay so we're actually gonna overshoot the height of the ISS okay so 482 and then we're gonna go to that apoapsis and increase the periapsis and then bring it straight back down that's for timing reasons it's easier to line up again with Cape Canaveral if we have a nice even orbit of an hour and a half and the re-entry script requires the hour and a half to do its thing uh, that's a flaw in the re-entry script it's very limited and but I just haven't done enough I haven't gathered enough numbers to really nail down the the flight path for from a general orbit this is probably a happy set of equations that would work Okay, so at 300 now, and then I'm going to get down to the standby orbit. 482 by 454 is high, but again, we don't have payload. It's also important that our one and a half hour standby orbit is mostly circular. Otherwise, it can be difficult to predict things. Okay, that's good enough. 174 actually. Probably a turn costs us a little bit. Okay, so we'll go from here. And we're gonna basically wait a day to get back into alignment with Cape Canaveral. There are other ways to do this, but this is the simplest. So now this should be the orbit before we come back. So the one that we start the re-entry script on. And to see whether you're a good distance away if we're in a one and a half hour orbit that means we make 16 orbits in a day so we cover 360 degrees of longitude in a day 
and that means that the next orbit will be 22.5 degrees um, to the west of where we are right now. Now Cape Canaveral is 80.6 degrees west so if we take 22.5 away from that we want 58.1 degrees when we hit the same latitude. So the same latitude as Cape Canaveral is 28.6 degrees north roughly. And so 26, 27, 28 and we see we're actually at about 59 degrees instead of 58 but one degree hopefully our cross range can deal with that <laughs> so basically yeah hopefully our cross range can deal with that so I'm gonna start the script now smart ASS has to be off and I'm gonna go edit re-entry to get the latest changes in Now again, we're gonna be starting the re-entry earlier than I did in 1.3.1. It used to be at uh, 126 degrees east, but now it's gonna be 110. And obviously we have to start the script before we get to that. Throughout all this, I should have had the cargo bay open and I'd be closing it right now. But I skipped that part. Cargo bay open because the radiators need that to function. Otherwise, it's going to get too hot. So, I'm uh, not 100. Well, uh, I think it is 110. Mm, 110 degrees east. Maybe that's going to be too close. Maybe that's going to be too far. We'll see. I mean, the reason I picked it is because last time I made the attempt, I overshot. And that was how much I needed to correct by, but no guarantees still. There is a chance we'll make it to Cape Canaveral, but there's a chance that we will fail, as usual. Okay, it is lined up properly in time. Okay, so in 1.3.1 I would have had a periapsis of about 40. We're going lower than that. Though the shuttle, the real shuttle, I think, managed it negative. It's all a matter of whether we blow up or not, basically. Um, we could go lower, and that might improve things. We'll see. But anyway, uh, 16 kilometers, basically. 73 meters per second here. And we'll keep track of how much we have left at the end. This turn is always painful. It's all a matter of telling what numbers steering manager in KOS, the PID controller of KOS, telling it what to use. But that's a lot of testing. Now the roll is the big problem as far as wigglies are concerned, so once it... I don't want it to continue. I push caps lock to get it to limit itself and start the counter roll. It's all right if we're out of position down to lower than 140, as long as we ultimately end right and don't lose all our fuel. So again, uh, caps lock is basically sort of a hacky way of doing it until I figure out exactly what to tell steering manager about this part. So obviously the shuttle has settled down, though we're still sort of twitchy and yaw and roll. The roll, oh, sorry, yaw and pitch, the roll has sort of settled down. We have 36, 35 meters per second left. That uh, might not be including the stuff in the cabin area. The MHM Mon3 we have here doesn't feed the OMS engine, so it wouldn't be read by this Delta V. And we have the rudder glowing red. I've seen that before, so I'm not too worried. It's a little bit weird, though. A lot weird, actually. But, you know, as long as it doesn't blow up, we're good. <laughs> Again, whatever I decide seems to work best. 
I'll link in the video description. And you can just overwrite the existing files, so your mileage may vary. Okay, we see Yaw coming close to maxing out here, so I'm prepared to release the caps lock. We've got 33 meters per second, so we do have to watch out for it, and I need to be cautious. We're almost certainly gonna fall short, and that's why the script has pitched down to 37 instead of 40 degrees. Um, yeah. So again, my script doesn't do the use role in order to control where it's going because doing that for cross range is complicated and uses more fuel because of issues. But I mean, uh, maybe if the shuttle got fine tuned perfectly, we could do that and implement that instead. But for now, the roll wiggle is just too much, so. For now, this is best. Okay, well, we're head further down, and now the yaw is maxed out. And it's starting to deviate, so caps lock is off. Got 29 meters per second left. We're slowing down pretty well, and we are too far away from Cape Canaveral, so we are going to fall short. And I will try and redo this with a different burn point for RetroBurn, and we'll see how that works. But we'll see where we end up and make sure that it's stable on the way down first. Okay, we're doing pretty good, but wish we were doing better. That yaw thing is a little bit annoying. But... I'm hoping that we'll be safe as far as not running out of RCS fuel too early, that's all. Of course, we're not going to end up in Florida. That's a whole other issue. We have some minor overheating on the OMS engines, but that's not too severe. So we could potentially aim for a lower periapsis instead. But it's sort of a trade-off because aiming for a lower periapsis means that we are doing a longer re-entry burn, which means we have to save more fuel for that. So, okay, we are nearing the pitch down point where it's gonna start pitching down. Um, that is necessary, of course, but we don't want to do that too quickly, otherwise we're going to require more from our rudder. So we want to bleed off as much speed as possible without stalling and then pitch down. And then what happens after that will be key because previously it had trouble staying in control after it started the pitch down and got to a certain altitude so it wasn't able to successfully hand it off to me. Hopefully that's fixed. So we're sort of seven degrees short. We're in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico pretty close to Yucatan so that's not great. So I'm going to try this again, but I'm going to try it again and get closer. So we'll do the retro burn 7 degrees further along, or 117 degrees. Oh, yeah, I'll try 117 degrees. It's weird because previously I tried 115 and went long, so it's I don't like inconsistencies, but... The script is going to have to deal with that by adjusting pitch, so we're going to have to move around some numbers somehow to make it work out. It's probably because of the difference in mass. And there's a factor that determines where to set the per periapsis based on the mass of the vessel. So I think I need to increase that factor because we were very light, about as light as we could be this time because we hardly have any RCS left. And possibly when I was testing before, I was heavier. Heavier means that you'll go longer because you don't have as much drag with the same um, surface area, right? It's all about your mass over a surface area. The higher the mass on the surface area, the less drag it'll get. 
and the, I mean the drag force well okay the effect of the drag force the deceleration due to drag will be reduced and so we are going to go long and the less mass on the same surface area will tend to go short so this is as short as we're going to end up going okay but so the next test I'll do I'll keep some more extra fuel to basically act as ballast now the script handed off to me at 20 kilometers but it's just on SAS and not touching the controls and that's deliberate so I want to see that it's all nice and stable without my intervention at all and I'll take control at two kilometers I think okay and pulling up a bit gently gently A little bit twitchy in roll here still. Uh, maybe I should reduce the authority. Mm. Let's go for 17, I suppose. And we can have the air brakes. So, in real life, the shuttle points down at 20 degrees, not because that's the best it can do for gliding it's because it wants to slow down it has a lot of extra energy and needs to get into the thicker part of the atmosphere faster it also has the air brakes for that reason it also does that u-turn uh, around the runway for the reason uh, to so that it can adjust how much energy it has and of course the flare maneuver at the end as well so the people seem to think that uh, the shuttle pitches down uh, at a 20 degree pitch down because it can't possibly glide any better than that because but basic math should tell you otherwise it's actually because it comes in with so much extra energy because after all it's better to come in with extra energy than being short of energy that would be bad and so but still I would say that this currently has too little drag and we'll see that yeah, I'm gonna burn energy by doing sort of a turn at least it turns all right um, but we'll see that by the stall speed that's ultimately the best way to tell how the flight model is so we might end up bumping up the drag but at least it was stable so goal number one we can fly this space shuttle and we can bring it back safely that's the important thing uh, I don't know if we can go any lower in the atmosphere with the OMS engines glowing like this. Uh, that seems to be uh, come about at the last bit though for some reason. The split rudders here don't do anything. Uh, you can see it doesn't affect braking at all. You can see the deceleration right now and with them open doesn't change. So that's just for show <laughs> unfortunately. Okay, it feels pretty close to stall speed here. That's a little bit lower. Um, 2.2, so 165 miles an hour. Uh, uh, it seems like it could do lower than that. Now, for some reason in this version, Real Shoots always says this about the vertical stabilizer parachute. I mean, the vertical stabilizer is safe. Obviously, it didn't splash down. But uh, it just always says that. So anyway, I'm going to try it one more time, and we're sort of seven degrees off. So I'm gonna start the retro seven degrees different. But I'm gonna obviously I didn't F5 and F9 because I'll try it with a slightly different mass as well, just to give us some variation. So we won't do as big a burn to burn off fuel, and we'll come down with some extra fuel. Okay, well, I'm not going to cover all the bits of this launch. I'll show you the very beginning, and then I'll meet up with you once we get to re-entry. So, run shuttle. And off we go. So, yep, yeah, this time uh, we will adjust and see if it works. I mean... As far as reentry is concerned, I think it's worked pretty well. I feel happy with sharing my little tentative fixes with you, though, again, we can do better. But now it's just a matter of the reentry script, not 
the testing of the shuttle itself. So we've got workable shuttle configs. Okay, so here we are again. We have 215 meters per second left prior to re-entry burn. And so that's what we're starting off with. It's a minor difference, not like carrying a payload back down, but um, well, we're changing another variable right now anyway by editing the re-entry script and changing the burn point, which is this line here. And I'm going to set that to uh, 117. You can see the original was 126, so basically not quite what it was in KSP 1.3.1 yet. But we'll see if it works. Okay. I have to say, I don't know why we don't have crew portraits here. Maybe I have the wrong version of Raster Prop Monitor or something. Let me just check. We do have crew. Six crew members there. But no portraits, so... Um, I'll have to see about that. Bit of a flaw. I remember somebody mentioning something about that before though. So I'll just look through and see what the fix is. Okay, we have ignition. We are a bit high on this end compared to where we would normally be. But it's sort of in my normal range though. Alright, we have 121 left at this point. A slightly lower periapsis. It was closer to 16 kilometers last time because we are slightly heavier. So about 89 meters per second left as it tries to straighten out here. Looks like we are going long, at least that's what the script thinks right now. Okay, we're around 66 kilometers and we've still got 78 meters per second. We're getting close to where I have to release caps lock. And, well, it's reading that we are too far away, that it's pitching down in order to get more lift. But it's not too bad. You can see there's a fair, it's fairly close between the relative altitude and relative longitude. So, pretty close to being right. We hopefully will make it. I mean, there's a chance here. So that is the status report at the moment. If you just look at the track here, it looks, you know, like we're going to end up in the Gulf of Mexico, though. But that's why the KOS script exists. Because if I was trying to figure out whether to do S-turns or pitch up and down just by looking at my track, I wouldn't be sure. I mean... I would probably do the wrong thing. Okay, uncaps locking because we definitely had yaw deviation there. 75 meters per second left. Okay, we are over Florida at 45 kilometers, so this is good. Um, well, somewhere over there is Cape Canaveral. We are on track. And maybe we're going a little bit far? I don't know. We'll see. There it is. Okay, slowing down pretty well, but maybe going a little bit over. So we'll have to adjust the KOS script's expectations. Oh, it's concluded because it's close to the KSC. That's another condition. If it reads that it's really, really close to the KSC, I'll conclude early. So, okay. Well, I'll do the pitch down then. Perhaps a little bit more roughly than it would. Um, yeah, I may want to remove that condition. We've got the yaw problem a bit. Uh, uh... It's going off. It's going off. Ah. I'm going to have to force it a bit. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Maybe. Maybe okay. I 
Okay, don't stall or anything. Oh, oh, oh! That's not good, that's not good. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Oh. No, the runway's there. Come on. Come on. You can do it, shuttle. <laughs> Don't be like this. You saw how nice it was when KOS was handling it. It's just being mean to me. Maybe I'll do caps lock. I don't know. Oh, it still pulls up pretty hard. Okay, we can turn RCS off at least. Okay, well, can we get back there? I don't feel like caps lock's doing anything particularly useful. It's just so rolly. She rolls a lot. I mean, you could say it rolls well, but it rolls too much, darn it. Okay, let's go to locked mode. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the roll. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing as before. Authority limiter 12? Let's say 12. There's a heck of a time to do this, but... Oh, first time landing at Katniss Cape Canaveral. Okay, not looking too bad, a little bit fast. Yeah, let's just go down. Oh, the parachute automatically deployed. Was it armed the whole time? I feel like it was armed the whole time. Okay, well, there you have it. So we managed to land at Cape Canaveral, so I'm declaring this version of the shuttle good enough. Uh, certainly fixes can be done, but here we are. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.